What if everything you've been told about achieving your goals is wrong? He is one of the world's top young mathematicians, but the more he tried to win, the more he failed. He chased a medal for years and kept losing. Then he stopped trying and won. This is the story of an IMO gold medalist. I was quite unconcerned about making the IMO team. I was just playing around. I didn't actually do much preparation at all. When I was able to let go of all of the expectations or the possibilities or the things that could go wrong, that allowed me to focus on just looking at three problems on my contest. I realized that, you know, even if someone told me that I'm never going to make the IMO team and my selection tests are not going to go well at all, I would still want to prepare the same way just because I really enjoyed the whole process. This is uh this is something that yeah was quite interesting for me. So I mean definitely IMO was a dream for me throughout. Towards fifth grade, I think, which was like my penultimate time attempting for this, I had reached the team selection test and I was very deeply attached to this goal of making it to the IMO team and my selection tests went really bad. I think I would correlate this quite a bit to the pressure I was taking. It had become a lot more to for example reaching the IMO than just enjoying some brilliant questions on those selection tests. And I think without an ambition to, for example, reach the IMO team, it would be a lot harder for me to work as hard. But on the other side of it, if you get clouded by that ambition, it can be hard to put in your best at every step. So in my last year, I was quite unconcerned about making the IMO team. I was mostly doing things for fun. I did a lot of teaching. I was just playing around. I didn't actually do much preparation at all. I did a bit of revision before the contest, but it was mostly just for fun. And then things went really well. I don't think uh, that year I was even thinking about making the IMO team. It was mostly just for fun. I think, yeah, when I was able to let go of all of the expectations or the possibilities or the things that could go wrong, that allowed me to focus on just looking at three problems on my contest and really enjoying the process of solving them and, of course, being able to do my best on that contest. You're saying that when you switch to play mode and when you did not pay much attention to the end goal, you scored a gold medal at the IMO. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that what a student should be working towards is not necessarily the end goal, it's, I mean, especially in Math Olympiad. It's more about the skills you developed along the way. It's, it's about the person you become along the process and switching to play mode, just have fun, do what you have to do and don't get attached to the fruits of, of your action. I think the other thing is also, if uh, like Olympiads do have a lot of luck involved in the sense that especially at this level where only six people from the country are making the IMO team, there will be a lot of people who are very deserving and you're definitely one of them at that stage. But things may not go your way and I think if you are too concerned about the end goal, you might start questioning, you know, maybe I should have spent my entire high school doing something else. But um, when, you, when I started thinking about things like this and it was a pretty dark phase, I realized that, you know, even if someone told me that I'm never going to make the IMO team and my selection tests are not going to go well at all, I would still want to prepare the same way just because I really enjoyed the whole process. I made a lot of friends. I learned a lot of new things. It gave me skills in problem solving that are going to help me throughout my life. So I wouldn't want to take any of it back. That's a great thought experiment. So imagine that you will not get the end goal. Will you still be working for it? Mm -hmm. And here you get your answer.